So, just a couple of days ago, everyone was furious over the Customs Department's plan to include over 60 types of food to the GST list. As DG had said that it's only a few items not consumed by the masses. Because, you know, potatoes, margarine and kway teow, all very atas 1K. We plebs are obviously too poor to even dream of consuming such things. Of course, we all know now that the order has been very abruptly cancelled. Which is fantastic because otherwise it would have come into play on Raya week. Nice. Even though it's been cancelled though, it does hammer home two important points. Number one, as we all know, the government is broke. OPEX has been rising, population is ageing, we're living longer, so Putrajaya needs more money to fund healthcare facilities and pay pensions for the civil service. Implementing GST in 2015 did help somewhat. But as we pointed out in the Edge Weekly a couple of weeks back, Total government revenue, it's only enough to fund 84.5 sen of every one ringgit it intends to spend this year. The rest of the spending is covered by debt, which had more than doubled to 648.5 billion ringgit last year, just over 50% of GDP. Which explains why the taxman has been more aggressive of late and going after corporates like TNB and Magnum, and why we will start paying tourism tax starting next Saturday, thanks to a controversial bill that was passed in April. Now, according to China Press, the Tourism and Culture Ministry had allegedly expedited the implementation of the tax because it needed to plug a deficit totaling a quarter of a billion ringgit. Citing a source, the paper claims that this hole stemmed from financial mismanagement and improper planning. This source was also quoted as saying, the tourism board may look grand from the outside, but inside, it's empty and they owe money to many suppliers. The ministry has yet to respond to the allegations. Now, whether the report is true or not, this new tax is going to hurt tourism arrivals, which is going to make hitting this year's target a problem. And obviously, it's only going to hit local consumers right in the wallet. Which brings us to point number two. Our top officials have absolutely no empathy for the regular guy on the street. We are already grappling with pricier goods and services, stagnating wages and rising household debt, which last year stood at 1.1 trillion ringgit or 88.4% of GDP. Now, Prime Minister Najib recently pointed out that the Economist Intelligence Unit pegged Malaysia's cost of living as the lowest in Southeast Asia, thanks to government efforts. There's just one teensy tiny little problem. The EIU's cost of living index is calculated by comparing the absolute price of 160 goods and services, which are then converted into US dollars. Plus, it is meant to help HR managers figure out cost of living related payroll changes when they transfer their employees to a different country. So if you're an expat with a benefits package and earning in US dollars, then yes, it is cheap to live in Malaysia. In fact, thanks to a weak ringgit, our cities are just affordable. They have even become marginally cheaper for expats over the past five years, according to a different survey by ECA International. Ouch. That's not to say that the government hasn't done anything to help consumers. We've got price control checks, BRIM, and all the home financing schemes and housing programs like Prima. Plus, we've got almost 200 Clinic 1 Malaysia across the country. We could do with more, but it's a decent effort. And we do understand the need to rein in spending to achieve the government's fiscal deficit target. But it cannot be at the expense of the people. Tax the fancier luxury goods and services if you must. And for God's sake, plug those leakages. I mean, imagine if they hadn't scrapped the GST expansion. How is it possible that a Malaysian financier is able to get away with using embezzled funds to buy millions of dollars of jewellery for an ex-Victoria's secret model in an attempt to get laid? while we plebs get to pay more for kui tiao. Of course, that's history now that they've cancelled. No, it's not history. Was the customs order reversed because it would have been unpopular in an election year? Whatever the answer, the GST expansion is not going to go away. Like Freddy Krueger, it will lurk in the shadows, and then when you least expect it, it will pounce. So the next time it appears, you'd better be prepared. Forget posting angry Facebook comments. Rally your community. Raise awareness, talk to your local assemblyman, demand change, start a campaign and call it hashtag free the Kuei Tiao. Because 
if you don't do something, someday it will be too late to do anything. Then you wouldn't have gotten laid and you still have to pay more for kuei tiao. Just saying.